Hi everybody. Well, you could be forgiven for thinking that it's Father Christmas here with the beard and the hat and the shirt and all these wonderful presents that we've got here at Hobbies Australia to start shipping, but it's Andrew and here we go with our final edition of Show Us Your Kits for 2021. So what we're gonna have a look at today is a shipment from Dragon Models that has just arrived in the warehouse and our elves over there at Warehouse Central are busily trying to push this stock out to get it to stores uh, in the lead up to Christmas and in those days immediately following Christmas. The first uh, couple of kits we're gonna have a look at today are from the Apollo range of kits from Dragon. And the first one, of course, is this wonderful 172nd scale Saturn V. Uh, this was released last year. They've done a reproduction run because of the popularity of it. They've modified the packaging so it's not quite as big and bulky from a shipping point of view, but it's still an incredibly, incredibly impressive kit. So not an overly complex kit to build, but certainly a tonne a ton of detail in there. And if we just flick here quickly through the instructions uh, in the fold out format, you'll actually see there the potential for this model in regards to building it straight from the kit or with some super detailing. It's absolutely phenomenal, um, the opportunity that a, that a modeler could have with this kit. Lots and lots of online references, uh, a great model straight out of the box, but of course this could be super detailed. Uh, it could be built, um, in, in such a, a situation where it actually looks like the, the model is, is, is being launched, so a dynamic type situation. Uh, it could be set up with lights, flicker lights for the various booster rockets. Just so much potential for this model. It's just, um, yeah, it's, it's a, a, a kit that um, is just to die for. Uh, retailing for $239, shipping to stores now. So the second uh, model that we're going to have a look at now is uh, also, again, from the Apollo series, and it's retrieving the Apollo. So we've got the SH-3D Seeking um, with the Apollo Command module. Now, when you open this box, and we'll quickly do that, it's just chock-a-block full of great detail. We've got the helicopter, the Seeking. Um, we've got the Command module. We've got the Sea Base photo etch, decals, and a very, very nice instruction booklet again. Uh, in my opinion, the Sea Kings from Dragon uh, in the 172nd scale are some of the nicest ones out there. There's lots of detail in the box, and you know, for a, a, a modeler who would like to get in there and, and add additional detail, there's certainly scope to do it. This kit, uh, everything you see here in the box, retailing for $58. This is again a reproduction um, from Dragon. The last time this was available in the market, it was incredibly well received. So they've now re-released it. And this is again shipping to stores currently. So that covers off on the uh, the Apollo series of kits from Dragon in this shipment. Uh, nothing, nothing new there, but some re-releases and some favorite um, kits, some very well detailed kits. The Saturn V has got that real wow factor the uh, Sea King with the Apollo Command module in the recovery uh, mode. Very, very nicely done and really great models. Next model I want to have a, a quick discussion on is uh, a kit that's uh, in a new format. The Cyber Hobby brand, uh, part of the Dragon Group, brought out a 135th uh, Jeep, uh, an SAS Jeep some, I don't know, 15, 18 years ago. Um, and it was very, very highly regarded at that time. What we've got here uh, and 2021 being the 80th anniversary of the British SAS Regiment, um, Dragon have re-released uh, this kit. And what they've actually done here is we get three Jeeps, we get all the crew, and we also get a figure of Lieutenant Colonel Sterling, and we're gonna put a photo in this video so you can actually see a very, very famous uh, and well-known photo of an SAS patrol going out, obviously a stage picture, but pretty much everything that's in that photo can be built using this box. Um, let's open it up and have a look. So this is Dragon Kit 6931. So what we've got in here, as I said, loads of plastic. We'll take all that out. Let's have a look here. We've got figures, we've got weapons, we've got tires, we've got jerry cans in two different formats. And I want to touch a bit more on that. We've got more wheels additional bits and pieces, decals, which are very, very minimalistic, which you would expect from a, a vehicle from, from the SAS. We've got loads of photo etch here. We've got um, tie down straps for the various jerry cans. We've got relief parts for the jerry cans to give them more, more depth. Um, we've got the sand channels that were mounted on the back 
uh, of the Jeeps to get the uh, Jeeps out if they became bogged in the sand. Um, and of course, we've got the instructions. Okay, so let's just quickly go through these um, decals and photo etch. We probably don't need to touch much more on those. We've got clear parts there in the way of headlight lamps. So that's nicely done. Um, you know, a little bit of um, opportunity there to do some super deal detailing on the front of the Jeep. So that's all great. We've got the one, two, three Jeep chassis. Quickly have a look at that. So again, nice relief on there. Quite nicely done. Um, you can see a little bit of detail there on the engine bay and in through the, the pan, all that sort of stuff. So really nicely done. Good to see these. Um, what I do particularly like, and this is something that Dragon became synonymous for when they started first doing this, is that their multi-part wheels allowed you to get lots and lots of detail into the treads, etc. So that was a nice touch, and that's replicated here with this kit. That's great. You look here at all the, the weapons. So we've got the various Vickers K guns in the combinations, the single and the twin mounts. So that's really nice. And of course we have the big 50 caliber machine gun. Now these have been used with their slide mold technology. So the barrels are hollowed, all the cooling ports on the barrel are in evidence. So with some spray painting of the, of the guns, probably in a black and then dry brushing with a gun metal color, these are really gonna pop and pop very, very nicely. Okay, so the figures are very nicely done. They're probably not up to, say, uh, Gen 2 standard from Dragon, but really they're not far off. Um, we've got the separate heads, uh, we've got arms, torsos, etc., etc. That's all good. Uh, here on the figure that's supposed to represent uh, Colonel Sterling, we've got his duffel coat, we've got the collar uh, or hood that is separate. Uh, his head, we've got his officer's cap, etc., etc. So really, really nicely done with careful painting, a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of flash on here, but not a heck of a lot. These will come up very, very nicely. Now you can mix and match the figures. As you can see, uh, it actually features three car crews, so two men per car, so that's six seated figures, plus um, the standing figure, but we've got additional figures in there, so we can chop and change arms and legs to better suit what it is that you're trying to achieve in your diorama uh, or in your individual vehicle. So very, very nicely done. Um, and a big shout out to Dragon for getting that uh, happening. Now, because there's three vehicles in this kit, okay, obviously this sprue, the B sprue is, is replicated three times, but we look here at the detail. So we've got like the, the framework for the seats, that's nice. The steering wheel is very finely done. We've got um, detail moulded into the seats, which with, again, careful painting and dry brushing highlights will show the creases and the seams that would have been on the, the canvas seats, so that's all nice. We can see here the heavily modified radiator that was synonymous with the SAS vehicles. Uh, they have fitted a, a water condenser on the front to make sure these vehicles didn't um, overheat when in action. Uh, really nicely done. And look, you know, a Jeep in 135th or a quarter ton truck, um, depending on who you speak to and, and how they'll market it. Um, there's not a, a lot of parts in it, but this is very finely done. You know, we've got there the, um, the fan uh, for the motor. We've got batteries, we've got motor detail, etc. etc. suspension, um, really nicely done. Lots of fine parts, attention to detail. So you wanna make sure that you're careful when you cut those off the sprue that they don't get eaten by the carpet monster. But look, three 135th scale Jeeps from Dragon with figures, with all the various armament and photo etch options, retailing for $95, works it out at what, $32 a Jeep? Um, and that's pretty much bang on for the, um, the likes of some of the other brands that are getting out there, like the Big T, a um, couple of other ones. So, you know, very nicely done. The one thing that I was really impressed with, um, with this kit, and I'll just quickly have a look at this. I, I made mention uh, on the photo etch that there was some additional relief parts to put in here in between the parts uh, or, or the halves of the fuel cans, the jerry cans. Now, this is how we would traditionally see jerry cans molded. Um, split down the middle and away we go from there, okay? Put the photo etch in the centre, glue the parts together, gives it that definition, that 3D depth. And, and it, it's always been an acceptable way to model jerry cans in 135th. But 
what the guys at Dragon have done here with this sprue is a little bit different. Where we see the jerry can molded as a single piece and then we have the top molded as well. So we'll cut those off, clean them up, two attachment points on the base, that'll be fairly straightforward. Cut off the top, attach that, all the seam will be under the lip so you really won't see it. You've then got the individual cap and the handle. So that's an awful lot of detail in a 135th jerry can and it's very, very nicely done. So well done to Dragon on that one. Break. Three, two, one. Final thing we'll quickly look at is the instructions. Um, as we can see here, 80th anniversary, SAS Desert Raiders, three patrol vehicles with commander and six crews. Okay, so seven figures in total. Um, traditional instruction layout from the people at Dragon. We've got our colour call out, fairly straightforward. Okay, all good there, through the stages. It's not until you get over here to step 10 where you have to make a decision on which configuration of vehicle do you want to build based purely on the armament. Okay, so we've got there the Vickers K guns in single and dual mounts. We've got the 50 caliber machine gun either in the passenger's um, position uh, mounted on the bonnet or we've got the uh, other option where it's uh, mounted in the tray of the um, Jeep and could be used by a third crew member uh, if they were actually in the Jeep. So that's all, all nice. Quickly flip that over. Okay, we've got there the various loads, water cans, fuel cans. Again, we can see all the photo etch coming into play there. Very, very nicely done. And then we've got the painting options, vehicles one, two, and three, uh, as used by the British uh, SAS in North Africa, 1942-1943. Final stage is the construction and painting of the figures. Um, very nicely done, as I said, clean and crisp, careful painting, these figures will really, really pop and will bring this whole thing together. So $95 retail uh, in our warehouse now and shipping um, should be very, very well received by modelers uh, and fans of the SAS, and that's Dragon Kit 6931. So one of the new um, kits in this shipment from, from Dragon is, is a, it's a combination um, between Dragon and Platts model out of Japan. Now, Dragon have been known for their, for their German fighting vehicles for some time, uh, and a couple of other things like their T-34s, their Shermans. What they've done now is uh, a combination or a compilation with Platts, where we're taking the Dragon model and they are super detailing these with interior parts, and these are being aimed primarily at the Japanese market. Um, Japanese modelers have this real, um, affinity for super detailing their kits, and that's fantastic. Probably far and above what most modelers would think would be um, the necessary level. Japanese modelers seem to really, really thrive on super detailing. So Dragon have taken their kits, they're working with plats, and we'll have a look at some of the options that they're now including in their boxes. Uh, they've announced five, um, <clears throat> pardon me, of these kits uh, in what they're calling their mono. As I said, uh, the mono range is aimed primarily at the Japanese model market. So there's not a lot of this stock coming out uh, at the moment. We're trialing these to see how they go. Um, the first one is their Panzer One. The second one, their Panzer Two. The third one is their Marder tank, which we're also gonna have a look at a little bit more detail. The fourth one is a T3476. And their fifth one, and you'll have to pronounce, uh, excuse my pronunciation, but it's a German Gneisenhauer, um, which is a 38T tank basis with a 125 millimeter captured house mounted on it. We'll bring you more information uh, as it becomes available on these. But let's quickly have a look at these. Um, we'll start off here with the, with the Panzer One. Panzer One's a pretty straightforward tank, not a huge tank, um, but if we have a look here at the box art, we've got that, okay, great, mono, dragon, um, we then flick it over and straight away you can see things are a, a little bit different. This would have been the traditional Dragon box offering, but now we've also got that. Um, I'm not going to really look at the Panzer One. I'm really much more going to focus on the Marder Three, the tank killer, um, because when you go through these, this, this really does stand out for me. Uh, these kits at the moment, recommended retail on these is $89.99, 135th. 
tons of interior detail. So let's have a look at what we're getting here in the box. So this is their 135th tanks of the world, uh, their Panzer Jaeger Marta 3. If we flick that over, we see the two different types of box art that are being displayed. Quickly open that up. And we'll look at the instruction first and foremost. As I said, aimed at the Japanese market. So all the instructions are in Japanese, okay? So you're gonna need your reference material for your paint call outs, all that type of stuff, to make sure that you're getting everything right. Uh, unless of course, you're fortunate enough that you speak or read Japanese. Lots and lots of detail. Um, let's have a look at what the sprues are like. So when you open the box, uh, in this kit, there's a couple of things that jump out at you. Um, the first thing is, is here we go. We've got 3D printed, 3D printed parts, uh, which is much, much different to what we've expected in past from from the likes of Dragon. So obviously, we can see the influence from the Platts Company um, into this. Very, very finely done. Um, looks very, very nice. So their photo etch um, is a lot more uh, extensive and intricate than we would normally have expected to see in a Dragon model. So obviously they've reworked this sheet with a couple of more inclusions. Very, very nicely done. Um, note that we've got uh, clear contact or contact-like material on each side. So if like me, um, you always anneal your photo etch before you start working on it, make sure you take that protective coating off uh, before you hit this with any heat because otherwise you'll, apart from the fumes, you'll make a bit of a mess and, and go from there. But certainly well worth well worth the, uh, the work on including this photo etch into this model. Individual link and length tracks, uh, as we've come to expect from most modelling companies. The tub um, for the fighting vehicle is very, very nicely done. Um, and if we look there at the detail, um, we can see they're quite nicely done, quite nicely done. So we also get a turned metal barrel, okay? Nicely done, well rendered. Put that to one side, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, but again, you know, going through here, um, there's just a lot of refinement to these parts, um, you know, internal detail. You can see here that this is all been cleaned up and worked on and is very, very nice, clean, crisp. Tons of internal detail uh, on this fighting vehicle. So it's going to be quite uh, a nice kit when it's done. Now I guess depending on the individual needs or wants of the modeler will dictate how far he or she will go and whether or not you'll, you'll push that a little bit further. Things like the individual gun racks, or the ammunition racks here, very, very clean and crisp. They're actually hollowed out, um, very, very nicely done. Coming through here, straightforward, but again, very clean, very crisp. No sprue um, or, or flash marks on there, and um, if anything, <coughs> pardon me, if anything, uh, any knockout marks are very, very well concealed. Road wheels, drive sprockets, suspension, clean, crisp, very nicely done. Decal sheet, a nice and crisp and clean, uh, printed uh, by Cartograph for the team at Dragon. So, you know, you know they're going to be right, they're going to be accurate in register, no excess carrier film, etc., etc. A um, couple of pieces that I've just left out here that I particularly wanted to have a look at. This, which is a soft vinyl uh, tonneau cover to put at the back uh, of the vehicle or on the back of the vehicle and cover the fighting compartment. Look, I, when I first saw it, I thought it was like, um, you know, the, the DS tracks, the magic track material that Dragon used some years ago. But actually, it's when you get it out and you have a look at it, it's nowhere, it's nowhere near what DS magic or magic tracks were like. It's a very supple um, product. It's going to take paint, I think, here quite well. And yeah, I, th I think this is going to be a superior um, part than what we've experienced before. So that's a very, very brief and very rushed overview of some of the great kits that have just arrived in this uh, Dragon shipment here at Hobbies Australia. Uh, as I said, this will be our last video uh, pre-Christmas and more than likely for 2021. So on behalf of all the team here at Hobbies Australia, um, thank you so very, very much for your support. 
um, and putting up with us through the year, our, our videos, um, as you probably worked out, we don't take ourselves terribly seriously when it comes to these, but it's good to get product out there. So, you know, do me a favour, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, give me some feedback, what can we do better for you? Um, so, till next time we get to catch up, um, I'm Andrew from Hobbies Australia. Stay safe, have a wonderful Christmas. Um, here's hoping that 2022 is kinder to all of us. And if you're lucky enough to have four days off over Christmas like I am, build more kits. Take care, bye for now.